So, I felt like playing... Well, I played through it. I felt like talking about Final Fantasy VI. And I played through it. I, 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 I played through it, uh, I guess, a week ago. Um, I had uh, gotten done with it. I was playing it for around a week. Something like that. And... Well, I didn't play through the entire game. And the reason is because... Uh, I don't know what exactly happened. I don't know how to explain exactly what happened. I, w I got to the ancient castle in the game. And this was like... Second to last area I was going to go to before Tempest Tower. The only other last place in the game was the Tower of Madness. I had. And I got into a random encounter. And... Then the game kind of... Blacked out, then had this weird static kind of thing go on, and I couldn't tell what that was. I couldn't tell what was going on. It's kind of static flash, maybe for around three seconds, and then it stopped. Crashed. Done. So that had not happened throughout my entire playthrough, my entire 45 hour playthrough up to that point. And, uh, you know. So I got up, plus uh, Super Nintendo was still like on, it was still like had the red glow on, because I'm playing it on the SNES. So I press the reset button, nothing happens. I turn it on and off, nothing happens. And at that point I'm kind of freaking out. So then I, you know, classic strategy, take out the cartridge, blow on it. Um, and then I put it back in. And then it works. You know, you, you even get the whole... Sometimes, when it starts up, it'll play this sound, and other times it won't. It seems to play it, play the sound when you haven't played it in a long time. It'll just be like this, it's kind of like echoing kind of beep or something, I don't know. Kind of whisper, kind of a buzz. It's a nice sound. I always like starting, starting the game with it. So then I was just skipping through. Skip through the little intro thing and went to the file select and uh all three of my save files were deleted for some reason. And I knew immediately at that moment that my playthrough was done. I could play through it again. Another forty five hours. I could play <laughs> I could play through it again and get to the same point again. But I'm done, you know, I'm done. And, you know, I, I, I actually had to turn it off, too, because the, the prelude hurt me. It hurt me that I couldn't get to the end credits and hear the, the prelude play there, because, oh, the sixth ending is just wonderful. Oh, the sixth ending is just so good. Yeah, it's probably my favorite Final Fantasy ending. Yep, probably my favorite Final Fantasy ending. Yep, yep. Sevens is good. Fours is okay, better on the PSP, as always. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could say Final Fantasy One is okay, but but you know, Six probably my favorite ending. Absolutely love it. Uh, Umatsu went just hell out. Oh, uh, <laughs> he went out very well. With the soundtrack, very high quality, very good, sir. I love that. But, um... I just want to talk about I just want to talk about six. I don't know how long this could go on. This could go on for hours, uh, possibly. But whatever. I don't care. I, I felt like going on a hike today, so, you know, whatever. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, if I have time. But, uh, you know, so Final Fantasy VI. I absolutely love this one. So, favorite Final Fantasy game, absolutely. Favorite RPG, yes. Favorite RPG. And, you know, it's gotten some flack as time has gone on, I've found. Um, you know, people say the game's too easy. And I think that critique is totally fair, to be honest. I, I, definitely out of the SNES Final Fantasies, it is the easiest. Um, uh, compared to the PlayStation ones, I don't really know. A bit more awkward to say, because they all have, like, different systems. Nine is harder, certainly. Eh, eight. Yeah, eight is harder, yeah. Eight is harder. 
Uh, you know, eight you can get really messed up if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, seven probably is easier. Um, I would think. Or they're around close in difficulty. They're, they're pretty close to be honest. Um, but the reason six is it's interesting why six would be you know considered easy. Uh, six has the most characters of any Final Fantasy to this day. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, unless you count, I don't know, MMOs or whatever. Uh, most characters of any mainstream RPG Final Fantasy, uh, certainly. And you have 14 characters. Two of which are kind of like gimmick characters, because you have Gogo -Go and Umaro. Umaro is just a berserker. <laughs> Can't even equip things, uh, except relics. And Gogo uh, -Go is the mime character. But he is not as much of like a non-factor. You can get a lot of use out of Gogo. The only problem with him is you can't give him Magicite level bonuses. So his base stats will remain crappy forever. Uh, and his equipment setup kind of isn't that good. So I tend to use Merit Award on him a lot. But he's not bad. You know, he's not bad. But, uh, you know. So a general critique I've heard of Six. Not a general critique, actually. A critique I've heard from certain people about Six is like the only useful characters is like Terra, Celeste, Locke, Edgar, Sabin, and uh, you know, maybe Scion or something, and that's around it. And the rest of them are kind of just gimmicks and they're not worth using. I've heard some people say that. And you know, I don't disagree necessarily. Well, I do disagree, but I understand what you mean by what by your, what you're saying there. Uh, you, know, you know, what you're saying with that is uh, the, the other characters are too gimmicky for you, you might be saying. Um, and I understand that. You know, in the case of Strago, in the case of Gaw, uh, not really in the case of Realm, it's just Realm, you basically need to magic grinder, basically. Uh, you know, you're probably best off doing that. If you're not going to magic grind, Realm kind of sucks. It's very uncomfortable to go through the floating continent with, like, no spells and have to learn them through that way. You know, I magic grind, so when I go through the floating continent with Realm, she has, like, every spell possible she can get. Uh, grind up on Entangers on uh, Triangle Island and everything. But, um... I totally get that, um, especially if it's like you're an early playthrough of you. But um, for me, no. When I play six, I use every character. I use everyone, even Umaro, because he gets to have some time in the Tower of Fanatics because he can still attack. Um, you know, so I, I use I use every character. I use Gogo -Go as well uh, for a little bit. You know, you you can use Gogo -Go, like very early. You can get Umaro very early in the World of Ruin as well if you want. All you need to get Umaro is you have Mog. And you can get Mog any time. Uh, it's kind of like a matter of choice, right? Because you can... Um, some people will wait until they get locked to get Mog in the World of Ruin because you get all the special things from Narsh with Lock. So you get the Ragnarok Sword or Magisite. You get the Cursed Shield. Uh, you can't you can't get those if you don't have lock. So I do that. I, I will wait until I get lock until I go to Narsh at all, and then I'll get Mog there. I'll get the Ragnarok Sword. I will get the Curse Shield, and I will get Umaro all in one run. And you know whatever anything else there, treasures, try talk, all that. But um, that's what I do, and I've always liked doing that. Um, although it's like returning to Narsh isn't bad at all. Like the, you, know, you only need to go in like two houses to get everything you need. So if you want to get Mog early on, that's fine. And you know maybe you do because Mog, he's he, he's kind of very difficult to get good level up bonuses on just because the positioning of him. You can only get him after you get the airship in the World of Balance. Um. And then from that point, there isn't much opportunity to use them. Because uh, you have the whole lock and Terra being forced, uh, you know, forced party over when you go to Thamasa and everything. Um, so you can use him 
you know, a decent amount up there. And you can get a lot of levels in the floating continent. You know, because in my run, what I do is I will grind Terra and lock up uh, well, in the floating continent, but also in the sealed cave. Really, the sealed cave is actually what I was, what I was saying, uh, mainly. But, uh, I, I usually grind there. I, I will grind Terra and Locke up there around level 30. Terra around level 30, Locke around 32. And I'll give them uh, Esper bonus. So, I'll, I'll have Locke, you know, I usually get him up to around 70 Vigor. Uh, and I'll get him up to 2,000 HP with Green Beret equipped. That's what I want. So, you can use the Atma. I'll say Ultima for the rest of the video. The Ultima weapon for, uh, you know, you, you can get use of early on. Because I, I really like having you use the Ultima weapon in the game. I like the Ultima weapon. If you're going under level, it's basically, like, not worth using. Um, uh, not like you need to grind that much in 6, anyway. 6 is a game I grind for novelty's sake, for the most part. Uh, that's how I am. I don't... I. I there are games like that. You ever played Naruto Path of the Ninja? I love grinding in that game. <laughs> Probably like half my playthrough in that game is done grinding, but I get all these cool moves doing it. I love that. That game is like Naruto, but like Final Fantasy IV. Uh, similar to that. I like that game. <laughs> but, um... In the 6, you can do a lot of interesting things, you know. But... Now, back to what I was saying, you know, I, I get Terra up to around 70 magic, and, uh, yeah, that's around what I get out of that. Um, but that is, like, you know, going on to the Esper bonuses, right? Because I know people, and on my first playthrough, I had no idea what the Esper bonuses did. They are literally what they say. You know, you might think it's a little bit of a substitute. It, it, it is not. When it says plus two stamina or plus two vigor... That's what it does. Plus two to that stat per level. Because this is the thing about six uh, that you should understand if you want to play it at a higher level uh, or understand it more is level ups in six only give you HP and MP. That's it. They don't raise your strength. They don't raise your magic. Because there's four stats which you can raise. And virtually there really only is like three stats which you can raise. Besides HP and MP, which is strength, stamina, and magic. You can technically raise speed with the Raiden Magisite, which I think gives you a plus one speed. And that's it in the entire game. Which kind of sucks. You'd think they could have given it to, like, one more. Um, I don't know what. <laughs> maybe Kieran or something. You know, something. It gives you plus one speed, and then maybe Raiden could have given you plus two speed. But that's the only way you get speed up. So speed almost is like a non-factor in 6. Um, because there's just almost no way to raise it. Uh, the sneak ring, I think, on lock raises it by 5. I think the thief knife raises it. I think Genji armor, of course, raises it. You know, but... Speed, you don't get to raise it during the entire game. And ride in, you get so late anyway, it's kind of like whatever. Uh, I mean, you can get that earlier. You can get that earlier. You can, you can go there earlier and get a meteor and get the offering and get that and break the game. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't. I save it for last because, because you know, I save the Ancient Castle and the Tower of Fanatics for the end. Because you get the offering and the gem box. And, uh, you know, those make the game a little bit too... a little bit too easy. Um, but... Now, so basically, you can just raise, like, magic, strength, and stamina. And stamina, for the most part, you wouldn't even want to raise. What I believe stamina does, and if it does something else, correct me. It raises instant death immunity. So a higher chance of resisting instant death attacks, although you can just raise magic or hit if you want that, for the most part. It raises the amount of HP you get from a regen. And I think it does something else. I think it's like... Uh, I, I think it uh, had some... I think it might affect like how much HP you're healed when you're healed. Or it might just affect regen. But I think that's all it does. 
Um, and that is kind of <laughs> that's kind of useless. Uh, I only level up stamina when all the other stats I want are leveled up to the level I want. So I got like Cyan with like 80 Vigor, and I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay with 80 Vigor, so I'll just give him stamina. And I usually, well, not all the time, but sometimes I have him on Marvel Shoes, so he'll be getting regen, so getting more health out of it uh, helps. I'll usually give Locke stamina when it's like late into the game, and I have him around 70 Vigor. And 5,000 HP with a red cap um, with that bonus. I usually give him stamina at that point because I also have lock on Marvel Shoes. And uh, having him get uh, regen helps him with the ultimate weapon. Uh, you know, it is cool because having the Marvel Shoes on lock, he's in the front row, so he's protected by the, the safe it gives. He has haste, so he goes faster. And he has regen, which if you give him stamina bonuses, then that helps um, as well. So, I always like giving Locke Ultimate Weapon and Valiant Knife. Because the Valiant Knife gets stronger the lower your HP is, and the Ultimate Weapon is stronger the higher your HP is. So, as one gets weaker, the other gets stronger. I like that. Um, you know, I don't play the advanced version, so I don't get to go, get, you know, go dual Ultimate Weapon mode. Doesn't get to happen. Uh, you know, I mean, technically you can. I, you, know, you, you can do that. You can steal from Kefka. The third form, I think it's called Arrest, but that might be for Ragnarok. But you can steal an ultimate weapon from him and then equip it mid-battle. I've done that before. That's fun to do. That's fun to do. You get to do it right at the end. But, um, you know, you don't get much out of it. But, um, I mean, on that subject, I mean, uh, stealing in Final Fantasy VI, I'm actually, I'm a fan of. Granted, the steal rate in 6 sucks. Uh, from what I understand, it's just determined by level, I think. I think that's all that determines it. But at the same time, there's kind of like a problem with common steal and rare steal with 6, where, um, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not getting coroned up there. Hopefully I'm safe from the yellow plague. Hopefully that's not what that is. Uh, we would hope so. Uh, hopefully I'm not getting a nosebleed or something, going insane, uh, you know, coughing up blood, tuberculosis mode. Hopefully I'm okay over here. We would hope. But, um, so, the steel rate. Uh, in 6, commonly for a rare steal, it takes like forever. <laughs> I'll be honest, it takes like a while. I'm usually doing like 20 to 40 steals, uh, I would say. Um, but for common steals, they're like really easy to get. So, at the same time, it helps getting rare steals because you'll encounter an enemy, steal. And if it's their common steal, you're probably going to get it immediately. And if you don't get it, it's probably going to be a rare steal. So that helps with determining if the enemy has a rare steal or not. I don't think any other game did that. Granted, the other games usually didn't have rare steals. Uh, well, not to the same extent. Um, maybe 4 did, but I never steal anything in 4. Um, you know, but... Uh, 7, I don't think, had, had that. I think 7 had uniform steals. I think the steals were always the same per enemy in 7, but... Um, You know, that helps, and sometimes I do that. Like, I will get... Sometimes I will get the uh, Mithril Claw for Sabin early on uh, to replace his Metal Knuckle from the Rhinoxes. Because uh, usually I'm looking for, like, Rodox encounters, because I want Rodox as a Rage for Goss, so I want to encounter uh, every Rodox formation I can uh, outside South Figaro before I, I leave, so I can get Rodox. Easy. Um... And the Rhinox, I think it's Rhinox, enemy, uh, can get can hold a uh, Mithril Claw. You can get that for saving. I got that on my playthrough, but uh, I don't always get that. And you don't really need that. Granted, I like having Saban in the front row with Black Belt uh, early on. Uh, you can get the Black Belt from Telstar. Or no, 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 you don't get Black Belt from Telstar. You get it from, what is it, from Guardian or whatever Cyan needs to fight. 
you can use it on Telstar. <laughs> um, and I always love doing that. I don't, I don't see people do that. Give Shadow a ribbon to, to resist a Berserk and then give Sabin a Black Belt to get in even more physical attacks when he's Berserk. I love doing that. Alternatively, you can just give like White Cape to uh, resist it. But for me, because I grind, I tend to have a lot more characters in, in the front row um, with uh, Black Belt usually. I like Black Belt. Now, people say they don't like counter in six. I like counter. You really only would not like counter if you're in the back row. But if you're level, uh, you know, you're grinded a bit, then it does, for the most part, it's fine. Um, and I, I totally get that if you're going for, like, an under-leveled run. Uh, if you're under-leveled, yeah, you want a lot of characters in the back row in six. Which some people may not like. Some people may not like. They might like it to be a bit more traditional. You want your knights and... Uh, you know, your uh, uh, monk-esque job classes, uh, your physical job classes in uh, the front, and your mages in the back. Well, six is a little bit different. Because uh, six is a lot more based on individual character abilities. Because um, that's how it is with six. You know, you your characters always have four commands. Again, I'm sorry. Hopefully I'm okay over here, like Christ. I will wash my hands after this. My hands are already washed. They smell nice, but there will need to be more. Um, yeah. <sighs> you know, you have your individual, you have you have your fight command, individual character ability, magic, and item. It's always the commands, unless it's go go, in which it can do whatever. But um, you know, so like a lock has steel. That's his secondary command. And because that's his secondary command, it's not offensive unless you give him mug, so he attacks a lot. So Locke usually is in the front row unless you give him the Illumina or a long range weapon. Um, but other characters, it kind of depends. Like Cyan, maybe you want him in the front row. If you're going with dual Tempest Knives, you probably do. But if he is like just using Sword Techs, you should put him in the back row because his sword attacks are long range. Sabin, same thing. If you want him on like dual Genji gloves attacking, which I like doing, I like I like dual Genji gloves black belt with Sabin. But if you don't, and you're just using blitzes, well, you probably want him in the back row because they're long range. So Edgar, same thing, you know. So that's the case with six. Is like. Most of the character's special abilities are long range, even if they are physical based. Um, like the a lot of Edgar's tools and Cyan sword techs. They're physical, but they're long range. So you can just put them in the back row. So if you're not using the fight command, there's really almost no reason to put people in the, in the front row. Unless you want them to be doing black belt uh, counterattack moves. Uh, you know, which I do that. You know, I, I, I do that. I, I, I use black belt a lot. I like having, um, like when I go into the, uh, get my cat here, when I go into the Daryl's tomb, I, I, I have uh, Sabin uh, with Fire Knuckles, uh, dual Fire Knuckles, Black Belt, and I have Edgar with Ultima Weapon, Pearl Lance, Black Belt, um, and they're both in the front row there. And you know, at that point, I, I do have uh, the Dragon Horn, and I have a Pearl Lance because I went to the Coliseum early. You know, so I'm prepped, and if I wanted, I could have Edgar on, on jump. But uh, because the battles are so short, there's almost no reason to put him on jump. Because uh, it takes an entire turn for, for him to come down. So I just have him physically attack um, with ultimate weapon, which ignores defense, and uh, Pearl Lance, which is holy, so it'll kill most enemies there. Um, and I, I, I do that, you know. Um... That is a good option. I, I usually have Cyan on the, in the front row with Black Belt. Because while you're charging his sword techs, if he gets hit, he can do a counterattack, which gives you some time on the sword tech. And allows him to do something while he's just, you know, sitting around. So I, li I like that option. I like uh, Cyan with Black Belt. Edgar, I usually do not have a Black Belt later in the game. Although in Gogo's Cave, I actually have him on that. I have him on... I believe I had him on... Uh, Ultimate Weapon, Pearl Lance again. Either that or I gave him the Illumina. 
Uh, either way, he was he was doing that again for one more. But when I'm in Kefka's tower, he's on to the insert. Uh, you know, I only do that if I have uh, uh, the equipment available. And it's just to save time. It's just to save time. Again, if I were under leveled, I wouldn't be doing that. But because I, I'm leveled at that point, I, I, Edgar was around level 45 at that point, so I can do that. I have the HP to survive that. Uh, you know. And that is, of course, a very interesting thing about Six is how you use the characters. Because you, you, you can do a lot of different strategies in Six. Which, of course, makes the game open to challenge runs and things like that. And I think Six is actually great for that, among all the Final Fantasies. Because there's a bunch of characters to use. You have the opportunity to mix up how you use them. Uh, how you invest in them and things like that is incredibly varied. Um, and if you want to use have, to have them use magic, they can. Anyone can use magic. So... Anyone can become a mage if you want them to, um, you know. And I think that I really love that. <laughs> um, and you know, of course, with their special abilities as well, some of them are magical based, some of them are physical based. So it's really up to you how you'd want to develop that. The characters kind of have stats you might not expect, like their starting stats. Everyone has starting stats. Um, and without magicite bonuses, they, they remain the same. Um, like, for example, besides the mage characters, uh, you know, Terra Celeste, Realm, Strago, Mog has the strongest magic power besides the mages. He has 36 magic, which you probably did not expect. I did not expect that. Setzer has the second lowest magic power, I believe, which is like 29, I think. And that's second lowest to Lock and Saban, I think. Um, so he's like 29. But his physical attack is 36, which is pretty good. I think that's just behind maybe Shadow or something like that. Like that's So his physical attack is pretty good and his magic is like bad. But his slots are basically all magic based. So with Setzer, if you wanted to turn him into a physical attack, he actually wouldn't be bad to start with. You know? And the thing is, like, his weapons aren't horrible. They are physical, and they're long-range, too. And I think they're the only... I think... Yeah, besides flails, which you don't get much of, I think they're the only physical option for the back row in 6. Well, you have the boomerangs and things like that. Uh, you know. But it's just rare in 6 to have physical attacks in the back row, usually. Unless you really want Locke to be doing that. So... It's just, uh... You know, you, you can turn Sensor into physical attack. I mean, in the world of balance, I think his darts weapon have the highest physical attack possible in the world of balance. So if you want to bring him to the floating, the, to the floating continent as a physical attacker with, like, dual darts. Yeah, dual darts. Yeah. That's totally an option. And he could be from the back row, too. So, I don't know. I usually don't do that. Well, with Sensor, what I do is because... Because the fixed dice that I'm obviously going to be using at the end, all they're determined by is uh, your level. Uh, your level adds more dice to it, and then the dice need to... Uh, if, they, if they reach, if they hit the same number, uh, they will... Uh, they'll do a bonus damage. So you want to roll a higher number. And you want the same amount of dice to roll uh, you know, the same number. But, uh, you know, with that, so, and then, of course, it, it ignores defense and ignores the offering, uh, X-Fight, uh, split damage. You can call it split damage, but it halves your, your attack while you're doing it, and uh, fixed dice ignore that. So, by the end, I just have sets around fixed dice offering. So, his, his, by that point, his physical attack and his magical attack mean nothing. By that point. So what I do is I usually level him up on magic. Usually to around 50 magic power. Because I use slots with him early. When I go into Kefka's tower I have him on. I think it was Doom Darts offering. So I give him physical attack from there on. So usually I level him up to around level. Usually when he's around level 40. He should have around 50 magic power by that time. And then I give him on physical attack. And I'll get that up to around 50 if I can. And then I would just go stamina for the rest of it. Because his magical attack and his physical attack mean nothing. If he's just doing fixed dice offering. All that matters is his level. So. 
that's very unique, you know, and that, that's how I do, you know, I, I plan out, like, what level up bonuses I will give, and that's very fun to do. Saban, I usually give him a little bit into Vigor, because he has the highest Vigor to start with, I think he has 47, I think. So I usually give him around three levels with that, so he'll have, uh, 53 Vigor around that, and then I'll just go the rest into Magic Power until he gets around 60 Magic Power. Um... And then I put him up on physical attack at the end because what it is with Sabin is you can use Bum Rush and that's really good. It's a magical attack, by the way. Don't get that confused. It's a magical attack. Um, and you know, doing that, you know, throughout most of the game, you're probably going to want him just using Bum Rush, and he'll be doing like quad nines if you have if you have around eh, sixty magic power. He should be good on doing quad nines on everything, uh, or around nine thousand, whatever. Because um, because there was one game where I leveled up his physical attack because I thought bum rush was physical, and then I was doing like five thousand, four thousand with bum rush, and I was like, "What has happened? Like, what what is this? He should be doing like eight thousand. And then you know I did some grinding because I could I, I I was able to. to I made my mistake. I had only started the world of ruins, so I, he was only around level, you know, thirty or whatever, thirty-five. So I was able to get him up to forty-five and get his magic power up, and then Vom Rush was doing the eight thousand, nine thousand. I should be doing, but um, you know, with that, um, uh, you know, because at the end he'll he'll be on the offering or whatever, so. If I'm using it, you can use Genji Glove Offering and break the game if you want that as an option to break the game. Um, but uh, you know, that's what that's what I would have him on if I were using him for anything else, which I usually do not. Um, like if I were in the advanced version, he'd be on Genji Glove Offering probably, uh, if he were to be. Um, or I'd have someone else use the Genji Glove offering. Uh, you know, that's what you do. But, um... You know, that... that <laughs> um... Like, sh like, uh... I'm just thinking talking about Shadow. Shadow... It's interesting with him as well, like how you want to level him up, because you could give him magic power or you can give him physical attack. I got him up with a lot of physical attack. I got him to around like seventy. And the thing is, he was doing like nine thousand or like ninja stars, and I don't think I really need to do that. I think Shadow, you can probably get him up to like fifty vigor, then get him up to maybe fifty magic power, and then give him the rest stamina, because his his skeins and his uh, attack stars. Do so good. Shadow is a character you almost don't even need to level up. I swear to God, his 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 um his shurikens and his uh, uh scrolls seem almost like fixed in damage. They aren't, but they seem like they are. Like it seems like at the end of the game, I'm just doing like three thousand with a shuriken, six thousand with a ninja star. And like 9,000 with attack star. And that's just what it always is. I don't know if that's... I don't know. I'm not sure of the damage calculation on that. But I will get attack stars for Shadow at the end. When I go to Kefka's Tower, I have him around 30 attack stars. Uh, you just go into the Coliseum. Just give Celeste max magic evade. And give her... What do I give her? I just give her the Illumina. And... Uh, uh, you know, just uh, Black Bell or whatever, and Max Magic Evade, which is 128. Go in, and you'll probably beat that, uh, it's like a zombie bone or whatever, like, it's like an undead Tyrannosaur, and you can beat that thing pretty easily, if you're high enough level, like you're level 45 or whatever, you should be good enough, and, um, just get that for Tax Stars, just bet Ninja Stars do that, I love doing that, get that for Tax Stars. Because otherwise, it's like you you don't get much tax stars. I think you get around three in treasure chests, so it's okay. But 
you know, it's up to you. You can save them or you can not. That's a, that's a choice for you. I like using them just to get use out of them. But, um... So Shadow is a weird one to level up. I just use Setzer, you know. That's what I do for Setzer. But you can do other things. Like, if you wanted to use Setzer as a physical attacker, that's totally fine. If you want to use him as a magic atta attacker, that's that's fine. I've had him on occasion as, like, a sub-mage. Because sometimes I leveled him up just completely on magic for his slots. Um, and then I was having him basically use, like, Chocobop on uh, regular encounters. And then having him use Flare uh, for bosses or single single encounters. And that was working kind of well. He gets to save MP by doing that, because he, he only used Flare for that. And I like Flare in 6, actually. I think Flare is kind of underrated in 6. Just because it's non-elemental, and a lot of characters, enemies later in the game, have uh, elemental resistances. Um, you know, when you multi-target and things like that. So Flare is just kind of a good option. And a lot of times you have characters doing, like, single-target options. So, like, you'll have three enemies. I could have Sabin do, like, Bum Rush, take out one, Flare... And then maybe Gaw use whatever <laughs> whatever he uses. Could use uh, Tyrannosaur. Uh, could use... Uh, uh, what, am I, what am I thinking of? What am I thinking of? Ah, what am I, ah. Is it Prussian? Yeah, yeah, Prussian. Not that one. Not, not Prussian. Uh, from Prussia. But this is like Golden Bear enemy. Um, or you could... Uh, or have him use uh, Senior Behemoth or whatever. Osteosaur is also very good. I think Osteosaur is quite underrated. Uh, free X-Zone spell. When I'm in the Ancient Castle, I just spam instant death moves. I, I do that. I have Ga on Osteosaur. I have... Uh, what is the party I got? I have Terra, Cyan, Ga. Is it, is it, is it, is it Mog? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm not remembering, I'm not remembering, I'm not remembering. Where's my tablet? I will get that ready for you when my party is there. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, you know, I have, I have Cyan. I have Cyan doing, uh, he charges up to level 8 sword tech. But in that time, I have Terra cast X zone. I have uh, Ga. I don't know if you hear that. I have Gaw on Osteosaur uh, using X-Zone. So they'll clean up a lot of enemies. And then, um, uh, you know, Cyan, if there's any left, will use, uh, what is it called? Klee in the SNES. I'm not sure if it has a different translation. Uh, and that will finish off everything. And that's so satisfying to do, to just, like, kind of walk through an area and just, like, instant death every enemy you see. Got a tablet here. Got a tablet here. Um, that is so satisfying to do. I love that feeling. I feel kind of OP, but not, you know? Because the enemies, I don't think any, any are immune to instant death. So I'm just X-zoning. I am cleaving. Right here, I'm doing that. Okay, we got him right here. We got him right here. What is it? What is it? Underwater castle. Yeah, and Mog. Mog uses X zone as well. Or he jumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have Mog jump, and then if anything's still alive, I'll just clean it up with uh, uh, Pearl Lance, uh, Dragonhorn, whatever. Yeah. I love that that team, by the way. I love that team, by the way. You know, I go into Kefka's Tower. This is like the most beautiful team. Cyan, Celeste, Gaw, Mog. The Feng Shui is just so wonderful. Because you have Mog jumping or using dances, either of which I barely need to control. Gaw raging, so I don't need to control that. Celeste either casting spells or runic. Now she's runic, I don't need to do anything. And then Cyan charging sword tech. So I have other characters acting, in many cases on their own. Um, and um, Cyan gets to charge sword tech in the meanwhile. I usually also have Celeste on Gembox, just so she's casting even more spells. Uh, and that is such a great feeling. That is such... I, I love using that party. That party is so cool. Um, love that so much. 
that's such uh, you know, and that party there, uh, it, it's similar. It just has Terra instead of Celeste. Because I, you need Terra in the Ancient Castle, I believe. Um, you need. I don't think I've ever went there without her, because I just think you need her to get Odin, I believe. Um, I love using parties like that in 6. 6, you can do a lot with the different parties. I love having those options. I love having those options. Again, do you see why I love 6? I haven't even talked about the story yet. I haven't even scratched the surface. We're, we, we just got started. Like I said, I don't know how long this will be. It's going to be 2 hours. It's going to be whatever. I love... I love Final Fantasy 6. I love... Final Fantasy VI. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. But, um... Who knows when I'll end this. I mean, you know, I... I, 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 I don't know. I don't know how long I'll go on. I'll just keep going, I'll just keep going, I'll just keep going. But, um... And I love that setup, and I love using... I love using X-Zone. I think X-Zone is so... I don't know if it's underrated, but um, I just love it. <laughs> you know, you can just do two X zones and then do like one single targeting strong attack to finish off anything else that's remaining. And because, you know, it's a spell, anyone can learn it, and it's not dependent on magic power or anything. So anyone can use X zone, and it should get you good mileage, and I love that. Uh, you know, I do. I use X zone a lot. Uh, I, I'm a real fan of that. Because with 6, I don't give, like, every character magic. Usually what I do is I'll give characters basic healing magic um, and basic status magic. Uh, so I'll give them buffs. I'll give them, uh, yeah, I'll give them buffs. Uh, you know, they'll have haste as an option. Because I like using buffs in 6 as well. Um, and you can do summons for that. I love using Kirin for regen on the party. Zone Seek for shell on the party is good. Golem is good. Haste 2 when you get that is great. Because Bidguard actually does not cast Haste on you in 6. Uh, just cast Safe and Shell, I believe, and that's it. Which sucks. <laughs> um, you know, 5, I think it casted Haste, Safe, Shell, and Float on you. Um, so 6 kind of sucks with Bidguard. Um, so, you know, Bidguard and... Uh, and Haste 2 and... Uh, Kieran and Golem and blah blah blah. I love that as an option. I love setting that up. And you can get that, you know, you can get like all those besides Haste 2, Big Guard, right when you get Magicite. Because you get Zone Seeking Golem from uh, the auction there. And you have all those options. That is beautiful. Uh, you know, it's also decent to use Srafim as a, like a healing option when you're get, trying to have characters learn healing spells. Just going through. I have that on Shadow. So. You know, it's basically like a tier two. It's decent. Um, Tritok is like okay, but so many characters are resistant to uh, uh, those three basic elements later in the game. It's kind of useless. Uh, Maduin is not bad. Not non elemental damage. Uh, I like that. Uh, what was, what was the one I was thinking of? What was it? What was it? There's one summon that does, like, a water elemental attack. That's okay. Kind of like an option for Flood um, without Aqua Rake or Clean Sweep. But, um... I love that. <laughs> um, uh, you know, that's one thing. is like it's, In 6, I usually don't use Meteor very much. Uh... Granted, you can get Meteor. You can go to the Ancient Castle early and then get Meteor. And it's pretty useful that way. Um, instead of Ultima. But, like... That's one thing I try to avoid when I play 6. I mitigate my uses of Ultima as much as I can. Uh, I try and keep it minimal with op uh, Ultima Spam. Because that breaks 6. You've broken the game if you Ultima Spam. There's nothing left of the game. A quick Ultima Spam game is done uh you know but uh if like super boss is on the advanced version that's all it is quick ultima ultima if i have gem box more uh maybe gogo -Go mimics it maybe have uh i don't know maybe someone with a genji glove offering in there and that's your game <laughs> you know that's what it is for a million hp or whatever it is uh, you know have fun 
I'm not the biggest fan of the advanced version. I don't mind the advanced version, actually. The advanced version, like, its translation is... Hypothetically the best. <laughs> you know, it's, uh... The most accurate translation. I mean, you know, it's it's technically the best one. It's not the Woolsey translation, though. It's not the one I want. It's not the one I know. And the graphics are inferior, and the coloration is dulled, and the music is inferior. And there are other things that, uh, like for in, in in the final battle with Kefka, there's like an echoing effect when you cast spells and things like that. And I love how that sounds. That sounds so cool. Not in the advanced version. So the advanced version, you know, you have like Gilgamesh or whatever. It's like a magistrate. You have like Leviathan. Leviathan is cool. Gilgamesh is cool. Uh, the fact that you have another chance to get Water Rondo is cool. But. Kaiser Dragon is like, okay. Because. Because. Yeah, it's Kaiser Dragon. Originally, it was Zar Dragon uh, in the Six Code. I wish there was a way to fight Zar Dragon anyway uh, in the SNES version of Six. Um, I would have done that anyway. You know, I, I would have done that anyway. Uh, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would have fun fighting him. It would give me something to just quick Ultima spam through the, through the game. Give me something. There's Magi Master for that, I guess. And of course, everyone likes to say about Magi, Magi Master. Um, you know, is he the same, like, sorcerer who defeated, uh, Odin in that flashback? Same sprite on the overworld. I like saying he is. I like saying he is. I think that's cool. I think that is honestly cool. Um, and that gives me a segue into Six's story. Ooh, how long will this go? Okay. Should I do this? <laughs> Should I do this? Yeah, I'm looking at the time and I'm like, yeah, you know. Do I wanna? Do I not want to? Are we too late at this point? Yeah, 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 I think we are. I talked about the gameplay. I talked about the gameplay. I talked about the gameplay. I got that out. The story will be its own other thing. And it is its own other thing. So. I will make a video about that. I will make a video about the story of Final Fantasy VI. But uh, there's a lot to talk about that as well. If I really want to, I can make that as long as this. But uh, okay. Okay. I'm thinking that's the end. Thank you for watching. If you've uh, you know sit, sat through this entire thing, thank you. That was fun. Uh, I love VI. Hopefully you get you know a concept of why I love it as much as I do. Uh, you know. More of just like a general rant about these things. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't talk about like the progression in the game, like going from point A to point B. I just kind of talked about like general concepts in the game and strategies in the game that I love using and things like that. Didn't cover everything. There's plenty other to cover. But uh, thank you for watching if you did. Thank you for watching the entire way through if you did. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. You know, comment if you have anything to say. It's something I do. Like the video. I like almost every video I see, so like this video even if you you know, barely like it. And if you love it, like it. If you love it, favorite it. I favorite every video I really like. You should do that. Add it to a playlist. I, I make playlists all the time. Do that. Do that. Interact. Comment. I'll probably respond to you because you know, I'm on the low end of commenters. So I will see you. I love you. Uh, see me. Thank you. Goodbye.